You're so handsome. Swap Ooh. the controller! Oh my god. Please! Mouse and key is overall better than controller, but the only reason why us mouse and key players get like pissed off when we die to controller is because it literally feels like we get aimbotted, like close range. It feels like we get cheated. This man's about to aim assist. That's incredible. I love that. I wish he would just play controller. That keyboard shit. There's no such thing as grind for me. I always play. I don't take a day off. I don't play Valorant. I don't play Minecraft. There is no grind. My this I am the grind. That means we're left with TSM, but Ascend are still alive. It does not get more intense than this. Match point leaves us with two teams as Kashera makes the play. Kashera for Europe gets the shots in, but no shield break as now the fight goes down. So important that you get the damage here, and it's done! TSM up in the skies, house goes down for the heavens! London belongs to TSM! Imperial House spent three years chasing a championship, but to win it, he had to change the most fundamental part of how he played Apex Legends. Now, Hal didn't start his journey at the top of Apex Esports. In fact, he didn't intend to be a professional gamer at all. For me, it was more it was like a hobby. I never really wanted it to turn into like a job. Hal's unexpected venture into esports started with H1Z1 when he earned a spot on Cloud9's roster in April 2018. The league was backed by real money and an exclusive streaming contract with Facebook, so the future looked bright. All we have to do is look at what sports does and just do what they do. Mm -hmm. The game space has just a long time refused to do that. They want to do it their way for their purpose of uh, being player focused for players sake for only players that are watching so they can sell more games but it all went too hard too fast including an eye-watering four hundred thousand dollar annual stipend for each of the 15 teams over half of which was earmarked for player salaries and only six months after launching the league was shut down due to financial problems for how though, the details didn't really matter. He was out of a job. He might not have envisioned himself as an esports pro, but after tasting a bit of what it was like, he wasn't ready to give up on it. So Hal turned to Fortnite. Not only was it a battle royale like H1Z1, but it was also the biggest game in the world at the time with a growing competitive scene. It seemed like a perfect career move. But despite his best attempts at getting into the game, it became pretty clear that Fortnite wasn't exactly for Hal. My f God! I'm so done with this game, man. I'm so done with this game. He was running out of battle royale arenas to compete in, but he was determined to make it as a pro. He received a lifeline a few months later though, with a surprise release of Apex Legends. With its focus on movement and fast-paced gunplay, Hal took to the game immediately. One got me. Oh Just my god. I just f them up. Apex was a huge hit, which led high profile esports orgs to form teams. And just over a month after picking Apex up, Hal was recruited by TSM, who quickly established themselves as a force to be reckoned with. Take a look at TSM just flying right in, taking a look at exactly where this might pop out. Yes, indeed, they find it. And yes, indeed, TSM wins the game. Let's see if Hal can win this game for him. Hits it on the gamer's origin player. Goes for the armor swap. He got the swap. He got an extra armor, but can he get the kill on the Wyvern? One more hit. He gets it. That's going to be a big setback there, but MVP is not the one we're worried about. Is there just a setback here for TSM? Who is going to do it? TSM, you're your champion. After winning Apex's first ever international LAN, TSM kept their momentum going throughout the rest of the year. His success and growing stream helped Hal become one of the game's biggest stars, though he could be divisive. Suck a f***ing bro! Do I have f***ing teammates? Like, what are we doing over there? Like, he really just f***ing headshotted me! 
You see, Hal's fiery competitive nature was both a blessing and a curse. It helped drive his teammates to glory on the server, but being that unfiltered and outspoken occasionally landed him in hot water. Senos, for what I know, like the org itself, they do not give a f They're an org that literally just gives players money and they always have the best players, but they don't give a f how you perform. Maybe it was inevitable then that Howe became a key figure in the endless keyboard and mouse versus controller debate. See, Howe, using a mouse to aim in-game, was playing matches against people using controllers, which gave them aim assist. And to Howe, that was just too much of a helping hand. Why you hated controller players so much? Because I feel like I was I was robbed of my skill when I fight a controller oh, player I got close the jump range. Aim assist close range on controller is way too broken. It is way too broken. The problem was that lots of people didn't think he was right. But in order to prove his point, Howe was going to have to take a step into the unknown. Okay, so there was obviously a difference of opinion when it came to all of this, but why exactly did the whole aim assist issue blow up to this level? Well, it's, it's funny that you say blow up because this was very much like a powder keg just like waiting to go. Aim assist versus mouse and keyboard has been like a debate going on for like years now, basically. But the thing that you have to remember is with a lot of competitive esports, especially FPSs, they're traditionally played on mouse and keyboard. The thing with Apex, it's very, very popular on console. So at high levels, it was very much understood that, yeah, sure, aim assist is a good thing. It does help in a lot of different scenarios. But most PC players kind of accepted the fact that you get so much more flexibility with the mouse. Right, but Hal didn't agree with that. He didn't just disagree. He straight up thought that the controller aim assist was broken. And to be fair, I can kind of get some of his arguments that he made. Like, sure, with a mouse, you can make snappy flicks and fast flicks. But in Apex, the name of the game is about tracking your opponents and sustain fire so you can crack their shields. And when you have a controller that can literally just lock on by the press of a button, obviously that's going to be a massive benefit. Now, to me, that sounds like a perfectly normal, reasonable thing to say. <laughs> So where does the controversy come from? Well, first of all, it's the internet and it's gamers. So that's one thing. And the other thing is too, is that like, there's no scientific research to say whether or not aim assist is better than mouse and keyboard. And most of the people online, like streamers and content creators, when they would say that like, oh, aim assist is broken, aim assist is cheating. They're just trying to stir the pot. And when it came to Imperial Hal, there's no way of knowing if he was being serious or not. Hal had actually been flirting with the idea of switching for years. You're so handsome. Swap the controller! Oh my god. Please! Even back in 2020, he started to experiment and found that his aim was actually better with a controller. Now, when the aim assist debate resurfaced in the years after, Howe was still dominating. As they're gonna clean up and secure their third win of the day, but no, it's Hal still alive! Hal what? is still alive! He snuck away to high ground! He took out one! Hal's left in the 1v2! Oh my gosh, and he's Wraith too at the same time. He can just delay the inevitable. He can also just press Q. What is going on? I cannot believe what I'm seeing. This is the final game and this is how you end it? Genius finish from <laughs> Hal. He's gonna Wraith portal his way. It's gonna be a heal off to finish. Hal enters a portal. The other team does not have a Wraith oh. and TSM wins. Are you kidding me? So a lot of people thought that Hal was just going on another of his classic rants, that it was a hot take just for the sake of it. The problem was that he wouldn't stop talking about it. And combined with his infamous attitude, it was starting to make people question his credibility. Mouse and key is overall better con than controller, but the only reason why us mouse and key players get like pissed off when we die to controller is because it literally feels like we get aimbotted, like close range. So like, it feels like we get cheated, if that makes sense. But again, if he wanted to prove that, he'd have to put his money where his mouth was. So how did the only thing he could do? He picked up a controller and got to work. Standing off. Oh, oh. Oh. Right, so when are we talking oh. about? This man's about the aim assist. You see, Hal became infatuated with the idea of showing everyone just how busted a controller really could be in competition. And there were some out there who really wanted to see him do it. No, I mean it, man. Like, like, I, like I, that's incredible. I love that. I wish he would just play controller. 
fuck that keyboard shit. Mm. When it came to big tournaments, though, he was still picking up the mouse and keyboard. TSM kind of just watching everything go down. How managed to get a stick there onto Bronzy as well as now Letter E are going to make their move. The bubble goes down. The ultimate goes down from the core stick. Keeping our eye on the feed as these teams fight as Snipe Down is brought back into the game. He's only got an heirloom to work with, but Snipe Down still trying to do what he can do. He got two kills with the heirloom, but he's going to go down. And the rest of TSM is all down. So Red to Red goes off. Oh, and what have I just Rams. seen? But in mid-2022, it finally happened. How dropped the mouse and keyboard and picked up a controller for actual tournament play. Okay, so lay it out for me. How big of a deal is a Switch like this? It's an absolutely massive one. It's hard to even like comprehend. Listen, Hal's probably the most prolific guy in Apex to this day, no doubt. But the thing is, he built his entire career off of playing mouse and keyboard. And he was gonna risk that all just to get maybe a slight edge with a controller. Right, it's such a big leap. Is it fair to say it's almost like having to relearn the game? I mean, basically, but it's even funnier because he's mostly doing it to prove a point. He thought that controller could give him a slight edge, so he's like, hell yeah, I'm just gonna do this. And what would have happened, let's say, if he just failed? He'd get roasted online for eternity, probably. Of course, yeah. Uh, you know, no one would trust him anymore. And on top of that, you gotta remember that TSM hadn't won a major since like 2019. So I'm sure a lot of haters would view it as like a last ditch effort to try and get a W. It would have been really rough if he had failed. Yeah, it probably would have been, but luckily things actually went pretty well at first. Now, Hal's early results using a controller were impressive, to be sure, but he was playing online tournaments and ranked. If he really wanted to prove his theory that controllers were busted, he'd have to show it against the best players in the world on LAN. And that opportunity arrived when TSM qualified for the ALGS 2023 Spring Split 1 playoffs a few months later. It was the first ALGS LAN playoff in years, and it gave Hal the perfect stage to make his point. Raising the stakes was a $300,000 grand prize. Everyone was hungry to win, but no one was hungrier than Hal. North F should have two, but it's TSM, surely like you say, Dan, who are going to win game number one? It's going to have to be a miracle here. It's a one versus three. TSM, surely it's just a matter of time here. Just hit your shot, TSM! TSM topped the group stage with a commanding 61-point performance in their final round, but they were far less impressive in the bracket, leaving everything on the line for the finals. NRG pulled ahead early on, earning enough points by round four to be just one map away from winning the tournament. For the crowd at home, it seemed like Hal's controller play wasn't quite good enough to cut it, and it looked like his gamble wasn't going to pay off. But then, in round five, TSM closed the gap to match point, with Ascend and Exec close behind, setting up a four-way brawl to potentially decide the tournament in the eighth round. So you have to work so hard as now TSM are going to have to take a potential fight in the doorway, but it looks like the other team backs off. Meanwhile, oh! Energy are down to two. Energy down to two, and it's Fnatic who have an influence now. Fnatic are jumping on them. Gilderson's down as well. It's all up to Nathan. He's got a Peacekeeper, but Energy are out. This is a ballsy play from TSM, they want to try and take the height, they want to try and force Onik away, they want to claim the building as their own, they're going to take so much damage though, but here comes Hal, Hal takes down Gambari Otasan, Fon123 eliminated as well, and all of TSM are still healthy here. They want to take the prime position here, they know Northeast is where you've got to go here, smokes are down, but they've got the Digi Threats. Digi Threats, perfect to see through those smokes, like you say, Rep picks up one, Verhoff picks up another, and TSM are looking hungry for it right now. It all came down to one final confrontation between TSM and Ascend, but in the end, Hal would not be denied. It does not get more intense than this. Match point leaves us with two teams as Kashera makes the play. Kashera for Europe gets the shots in, but no shield break as now the fight goes down. So important that you get the damage here, it's done! TSM up in the skies, Hal goes down from the heavens! London belongs! to TSM! Okay, so obviously all of this is huge for Hal, Absolutely. huge for his career, but how had it affected the whole game at large? Oh, I mean, it's massive, right? Like, he proved he could do it. He won championships using both setups. And more importantly, he might have settled the debate. 
Amos is might actually be cheating. I mean, he did it, right? And who knows, maybe developers are gonna take a look and say, maybe this isn't completely fair and we gotta tweak this a bit. Yeah, no, it's crazy. I mean, I guess the question I have is like, where do you go from there if you're how? You know, what is your legacy after that? Yeah, I mean, the sky's the limit, really. He can keep pushing it as far as he wants with the controller. He can go back to mouse and keyboard. He's just proved that, you know, it's all about the journey of being the best. That's all he cares about. And there's something, you know, remarkable about that achievement, you know, that he's been able to pull off. Now, if you think Howe's triumph put the whole aim assist debate to bed, well, that just wasn't the case. If anything, it added fuel to the fire. Even in the tournament that TSM won, the top 20 players were almost evenly split between the two input types, although two of the top five were using controllers. But it can't be ignored that Howe's move to controller was a risk that took him back to the very top. Honestly, I think ever since like the meta change to, you know, Syrian Horizon, I was mechanically like lacking in my opinion. So I decided to switch a controller. And it's the first land I played on controller and I got MVP, won the land. So I, I feel I feel like I worked I, I took a big risk playing controller and swapping to something that I haven't played in for a while and it all paid off, so and now that Hal makes videos about his tournament winning controller settings, the CEO seems to be staying on the sticks. Thanks for watching. If you want more content like this, hit the sub button and ring the notification bell. For unique bite sized videos you won't find anywhere else, hit us up on our Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. <laughs>